Here we have a master light and its high rejection map. To examine how the outlier rejection has affected the master, we can zoom in on an area of interest and copy over the zoom and pan by dragging and dropping this tab onto the other one. Now we can see the same area of the two images. If we want to look at another area of the image, we have to repeat the process. We have therefore introduced a new graphic function in PixInsight 1.9, View Synchronization. If we press Control while dragging and dropping a tab from one image to the other, the two views synchronize. We know that the views are synchronized because this orange dot appears here in the view selector tray. Now, when we move one of the two windows, the other moves in the same way. This new feature means that we can quickly and easily detect any traces of lines rejected when integrating the master light. For example, we can zoom in on this trace and check that this area is clean in the master light. This is pixel level synchronization. In other words, the two windows have the same pixel coordinate in their center and the same zoom level. We can also sync the windows by opening the Image menu and selecting Synchronize. We select the image we want to sync and press OK. We can disable synchronization for all the images in the current workspace. Synchronization is a property of the workspace. This means that if we move an image to another workspace, the synchronization is lost. To enable synchronization again, we need to go to that workspace and resynchronize. Synchronization has many uses. For example, we can use it to compare masters with and without drizzle. Although the drizzle technique doubles the size of the image, the synchronization is in proportion with the image size. If we sync the two images and zoom in on one area, the zoom level is scaled in accordance with the size of each image, 2 to 1 here and 4 to 1 here. By syncing the images, we can see how the drizzle technique has reconstructed the star profiles and avoided ringing from the interpolation. Syncing is also very useful if we have an annotated image and its unannotated version. When we sync the images, we can see the annotated one on the right with all the object identifiers and the detailed image on the left without the labels getting in the way. Syncing also works across multiple image windows. For example, we can sync all four of these images. When we zoom in on any of the four windows, the synchronization works across them all. One important thing to note here is that the object positions are more or less the same in the R, G, and B channels, but slightly different in the H-alpha image. The North American nebula is therefore off-center. In these cases, pixel-level synchronization isn't enough. PixInsight therefore also offers an astrometric synchronization option. For this to work, all the synced images must have an astrometric solution. Let's look at an example using these four images. Here we have the summer Milky Way from four different pointings. All of these images have an astrometric solution. To do an astrometric sync, we need to press and hold Control and the Meta key while we drag one view tab onto another. As you can see, the alpha symbol appears here over the tab. When we do an astrometric sync, 
A frame appears on each image showing the area of the sky occupied by the other image. Here, the circle indicates the top left corner of the other image, and the cross is its center. Now, if we zoom in on the North American nebula in this image, the other image centers on the same area. If we zoom in on the Sada region, the same thing happens. As with pixel level synchronization, we can also sync several windows at the same time. If we sync a third window, the third frame appears. And if we sync the fourth window, we get all four frames, each with its center cross and the circle for the top left corner. The four frames all have this area in common. What happens if we zoom in on the North American nebula now? All four images center on the nebula. But what happens if we zoom in on this nebula, for example, which only appears in two of the images? In this case, only two of the images move to that position because the other two don't contain that nebula. The same thing happens if we select an area in this part of the sky which is only in two of the images. To do an astrometric sync via the menu, we simply need to check this box here. Astrometric synchronization also works with images with very different fields. These four images of the Pleiades were taken with focal lengths of between 35 mm and 600 mm. All four images have astrometric solutions, and if we do an astrometric sync, we can see that the fields they cover are very different. In this example, the circles showing the top left corner are very important because these images are rotated. For example, this corner is the top left of this image, and this is the top left corner of this image. When we zoom in on the Pleiades, all four windows center on them, each with its respective orientation. If we go to this star, it is centered in all four images. Astrometric synchronization is useful for finding very small objects in very large fields. For example, in this photograph, taken with a focal length of more than one meter, we have a planetary nebula, NGC 1514. This nebula is inside the fields of these other two images. If we do an astrometric sync, the rectangle corresponding to this image appears. If we zoom in on the nebula, in these two views, we can see it in the center alongside these two stars. Now we can identify this nebula, which is a mere dot in a sea of stars in the wide field image. Synchronization also works with previews. If we create a preview of this area and zoom in on any of the stars in the Pleiades, all the other image windows center on the same star.